Hey everyone, thanks for watching again. I'm glad you found my channel and are here to learn. In this video, I'll go over conditional formatting in Microsoft Excel. I'll touch on a couple of the basics and then get more advanced as I go. First, I'll touch on what I like to call the done for you rules, like less than or greater than formatting. Then I'll show you how to quickly format the top or bottom performers in your data sets. After that, I'll touch on using icon sets like the stoplight feature to format cells. Then I'll teach you how to create a heat map. And last but not least, if you stay to the end, we'll touch on creating your own formula in conditional formatting, which opens up endless formatting options. We have a ton to cover, so let's dig in. Alright, let's dig into some basic formatting first. I'm going to go through some of these pretty quick because honestly, once I show them to you, you're probably going to think to yourself, these are so easy, why haven't I been using these all along? The first ones I'll touch on are the greater than, less than, or equal to formulas. In this sheet, I have a list of phone agents who have a goal to wrap up their notes and get to the next call within 30 seconds of disconnecting with the last customer. I want to highlight the agents who met the goal in green and those who are not meeting the goal in red. I'll do that by highlighting all of column B. Then from the ribbon on the Home tab, I'm going to click on Conditional Formatting and then hover over Highlight Cell Rules. From there, I'll select Less Than. Since I want to show those who are under the goal in green, I need to change the formatting. You can customize the color of the cell and text if you wanted to, but I'm just going to choose the pre-made green option. I'll do the same thing for those not meeting the goal, except I'll choose greater than, change the number of 30, and choose light red fill with dark red text and press OK. You'll notice there are a couple of folks right at 30, which means they aren't red or green. There is a way to fix that. I'll highlight column B again. Now I'll click on Conditional Formatting and then Manage Rules. Let's say that I want 30 seconds to be green. I can do that by double clicking on the Less Than 30 rule. Now you'll notice two drop downs. In the second drop down, you can change this to say Less Than or Equal to 30. Now just hit OK and Apply and then OK again. Now those 30s are all in green. You'll also notice that because I selected all of column B, Excel applied the conditional formatting to all the cells, even the header. That's an easy fix. I can click on the header cell then click on Conditional Formatting, hover over Clear Rules, and choose from Selected Cells. Alright, in this next example, I'm going to show you how to quickly highlight the top and bottom performers in any data set. Let's say I want to highlight the five folks with the highest after call, because these are the folks I really need to coach to. I can do that by highlighting column B, clicking on Conditional Formatting, hover over Top Bottom Rules, and then select Top 10 Items. Here I can choose to highlight the top 5, 6, 10, or however many items I want. You can also change the formatting. I'm going to look at the top five highest after calls. You can also highlight by the top bottom 10%. I'll highlight column B again. This time I want to look at the folks that are in the top 10% when it comes to the best after call. I'll do that by selecting bottom 10% and then changing the color to green. You can also highlight those that are above average or below average by simply choosing those options. I'll choose below average and change it to green. In this next example, I'm going to touch on heat maps. A heat map is defined as a representation of data in a form of a map or diagram in which data values are represented as colors. This one should be pretty quick. I'll select all of column B again. Then, under conditional formatting, I'll hover over color scales. Here you can choose to have the lower numbers in red, and they get closer to green as the numbers get high. Or you can have the lower numbers in green, and have the colors get closer to red as the numbers get higher. You also have a blue, white, red option, or a one color scale option. You can also custom format your colors by clicking on more. I like to have a varying color scale, so I'm going to choose this one. You can go back into the rule and play around with numbers by highlighting the column, and then selecting manage rules. From there, you can double click. It'll allow you to make changes. I'm not going to get into that right now though. The next example I'll touch on is getting into a really cool stuff. Icon formatting can be utilized to show how one number is directionally to another number, or a set of numbers. It comes in handy when you need to show someone if a number is trending in the right direction or not. On this page, I have a daily report that needs to get sent out to all managers at the end of the day. It lists the metrics for a call center. I want to be able to quickly show whether or not my team met the metric goals for that day by using a red, green, or yellow stoplight icon set. I'm going to start by looking at service level. I'll set up my icons in column D. I need to bring the same number that is in column C over to column D. I'll show you why in a second. I'll do that by typing equals C4. I'll also drag this formula up to the other metrics for later. Now I'll select D4 and then select conditional formatting. 
then hover over icons, then choose the stoplight feature. Now I need to edit the parameters of the formatting by selecting DE4 again and then clicking on manage rules. Then I could double click it to open it up. Right now this says that if the number is greater than or equal to 67%, make the icon green but yellow if it is greater than or equal to 33%, and red if it is below 33%. I need to change that up a bit. I'm going to say that if it is greater than or equal to 90%, I'll have it green. For some reason, I haven't been able to get percent to work in Excel under conditional formatting. So I usually change these to numbers, and then enter 90% as 0.9 in this box. I also want to say that if the service level is between 80% and 90%, I'll turn it yellow. So I'll enter 0.8 here. Now when I click out of that box, the red icon automatically defaults to less than 0.8. I also only want the icon to show in column D instead of the numbers and the icon. So I'm going to check that box here. I think this is how I want it, so let's push OK, Apply, and OK. Let's check to see if it works. Yep, looks like it does. I'm going to show you after call and average speed to answer because there's one key difference when compared to service level. When talking about service level, you want the number to be higher than the goal. When talking about average after call or average speed to answer, you want the number to be lower than the goal. Since both after call and average speed to answer have the same goal of 30 seconds, I can use the same formatting for both. So I'm going to highlight cells D2 and D3. Then choose the stoplight feature again under conditional formatting. Now I need to manage rules and double click. Right now green is on the top. For this example I'm going to choose to reverse the icon order to put the red on the top. Now even though the goal is 30, I'm going to say that I don't think it should be red until it gets to 35 seconds. So I'll choose number in both of these drop down options. Then I'll type 35 in this box. And I'll say that if it's between 31 and 35 I'll turn it yellow. Which means anything under 30 would be green. I'll choose show icon only and hit OK. Apply and OK again. Let's test it out. Yep, that works too. I'm not going to show you conditional formatting with data bars in this video because I covered it in my budget video, which I'll tag at the top of this video and put in the description below here as well. So the last thing that I want to show you is how to use conditional formatting based on a formula that you set up. This will allow you to format one cell based on what is typed or selected in another cell. But before I do that, I do want to take about 9 seconds to give you a heads up on a couple of things. If you are enjoying this video, or if at the end of the video you decide you've learned something, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. Doing so will give you an update anytime I post a new video. Also, I'd really appreciate it if you'd let me know you liked the video by giving me a thumbs up and sharing it. Also, in the comment section, let me know how you found my channel. Alright, so in this example, I have a list of callbacks that my associates need to complete. At the beginning of the day, I have one agent pull voicemail from the night before. They collect a customer's name, their phone number, and then mark whether or not the customer needs a callback in column C. If the customer needs a callback, I want my outbound agents to mark the result of the callback in column D. To make this spreadsheet easy to read, I want to highlight the cells in column D that still need action. For example, Vladimir needs a callback. Until column D is marked as complete, I want D4 to be highlighted red. I'm going to start the conditional formatting in cell D2, and then copy the conditional formatting all the way down column D. So with cell D2 selected, I'm going to click on conditional formatting. Then I'm going to click on new rule. Now I'm going to select use a formula to determine which cells to format. This opens up a formula bar for you. So in this scenario, I'm going to write a formula that says if C2 equals yes, then turn D2 red. So I'll type equals C2, then another equals sign, then an opening quote, and type the word yes, then a closing quote. Now I'm going to choose the format to be red fill with white text. Now I can hit OK and apply. Now I should be able to copy the conditional formatting the whole way down the column. I can do that by highlighting D2 and hit Control C. Now I'll highlight all the cells that I want to apply it to. Then I'll right click inside the cells and hover over paste special and choose merge conditional formatting. You can see that all the cells in column D that correspond with a yes and column C are red. But watch what happens when I enter something into the red cells. It stays red. I don't want that. I want the conditional formatting to go away when it's not empty anymore. No sweat. I'll just add another layer of conditional formatting. I do this by selecting the cells I want to apply it to. Now I'll select manage rules under conditional formatting. Then I'll choose add a new rule. From here I'll select format only cells that contain. 
Then from this drop down, I'll select no blanks. From here, I'm going to ensure that the cell fill is blank and the text is black when these cells are not blank. Now here's something really important to remember. Excel looks at conditional formatting in the order that it's listed in this box. Watch what happens when I click apply and OK here. You can see that the cell is still red, even though I said to turn it to no fill when it's not empty. Let's go back in and make an adjustment. I'll just click on this rule and move it to the top so that Excel prioritizes that rule. Now when I click apply and OK, the cell turns white. If you learned something from this video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you put that in the comments. It'll promote my channel. At the very least, please hit the like button and comment on how you found my channel. Until next time. Hey guys, how you doing? If you learned something from this video, you're going to want to do a couple things. First, you're going to want to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. If you do that, you're going to be the first one to get notified when I post a new video, which is about once a week. I'd also ask that you hit that like button and the share button, and then tell me what you learned in the comment section. If you do all of those things, this video is actually going to get out there for more people to see and to learn from. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time.